I'm Janelle, and I live in a house with my pet snake, Alfredo. I know, I know, we have some catching up to do, but first, ah! Hi, hello, this is the front of my house. Excuse me, our house, Alfredo and I. I don't even know where to start. I just let Alfredo roam around a little bit because he's feeling a little camera shy, and I'm feeling a little camera shy because it has been a minute. This is our home. It is a one bedroom, one bath set on five acres on the California coast. The house was originally a barn and it was converted into a house. And I just think that's so cute. The house definitely needs a little bit of work, but it's totally perfect and functional for me and Alfredo. It'll be one of my many, many projects that I have going on. I'm thinking that I'll give you a house tour and a tour of the rest of the property. And then we'll have our little conversation or heart to heart because I got some explaining to do. I am so excited to share this with you guys. So let's hop in. You just gotta get it. Okay. I gotta fix that. It's been a minute since you guys have seen Alfredo. He is so big now, huh? He's fully grown. He's three years old, but he's such a big boy. So this is what you see when you first walk in. This is the dining area and I love all the windows in this home, specifically right here because you get a really clear view of the field and the ocean. And as we walk over here, where all the, the fun happens. This is my bathroom. Um, I really love all the natural stone tile. I love the wood. I like the stained glass window. However, at night, sometimes it looks kind of spooky. I'm scared. This shower is unnecessarily large. I can have a whole party in here. I have been showering at the gym and at yoga studios, and this is honestly one of the highlights of owning a house. Something I love almost as much as taking showers is doing laundry. <laughs> this is my first big girl purchase since buying the house and I regret nothing. I am so in love with my washer and dryer. Again, like the shower thing, I've spent a majority of my adult life doing laundry at laundromats. But now that I live in a pretty remote area, the closest laundromat is an hour and a half away. This is just my little laundry space and I love how I can just hide it away with this door. So this is a throne and I just think it's kind of an odd placement for a toilet because the front door is right there. So if someone's knocking on your door, they're just chilling right here while you're uh, taking care of business. Just imagine. Okay, that was everything in the bathroom. Let's make our way to the kitchen. Are you coming? I left Alfredo alone for five minutes. I was periodically checking up on him and now he's under the fridge. Okay, so this is the heart of the house and it is a place that I am rather unfamiliar with. For some reason, I've convinced myself that buying pink appliances would somehow make me a better chef. And the data on that is inconclusive. However, eventually I'm gonna have to start figuring some stuff out. I was like, okay, Janelle, when you move to this place, you're gonna have to learn how to cook or else you're gonna die. And to that, I have also said, frozen pizzas for dinner every night. I have a full-size fridge. I've never had a full-size fridge in my life and I have no idea what to fill it with. Who lets me go grocery shopping? Before we move on to the grand room, I wanna show you something I'm stoked about. Look at this cute cutting board. I think I'm obsessed with like things that go in a kitchen, but I just don't like cooking. Have I cut anything on this? No. It's too cute. I think I covered everything in the kitchen, so now let's go in to the grand room. <laughs> I love this space. I love how open it feels. I love the windows. We got some high ceilings. I just feel really good when I'm here. And I know, I know some of you guys are wondering like, where is the furniture? I don't really have any. I did collect a couple things that are in the guest house that I will show you when we get back there. I really want to like carefully curate this home with like really cool antique and vintage furniture. As I continue to travel as well, like I'll find cool stuff and bring it back here. But until then, this is how it's gonna be. Do not ask me to do a kickflip, I will literally die. 
The house came with this rad wood burning furnace and it does a pretty good job at keeping me and Alfredo warm. And then over here, this is my little workstation. The previous owners actually left this desk here. My dad gifted me this chair and then that chair. You guys already know who this guy is. He's been on all my van life adventures. I love him. I really like this chair. My dad just gave it to me as a housewarming present. I could like do this forever. All right. Let's go upstairs. So like I said, the house is one bedroom, one bath, and the one bedroom is the loft. So, you're invited to my bedroom. Let's take it upstairs. Ta-da! Welcome to my room. It's pretty comfy, pretty cozy. The previous owners left this massive dresser here. It's not personally my style, but it's functional. And also, I don't know how I would get this down the stairs, so this is where it's gonna live for now. This is a mattress that was in my blue van, and then this past year I've been throwing it in the back of a couple other vans. This is my little vanity area where I like to do my hair and makeup. And I really like sitting here because there's this beautiful tree outside where I can bird watch. This desk that I'm using as my vanity is the desk that was in my blue van. And it works out perfect. I like sitting on the floor. And this corner is Alfredo's space. He has a 40 gallon terrarium. I love being able to sleep next to Alfredo always. He's just used to it, you know? We've been together now for almost four years. This battery that was also in my blue van, that was our main power source when we were living in there. I have this here just in case the power goes out. I just wanted to make sure that Alfredo was always warm. All right, I think I covered everything inside of the house. I'm thinking that tomorrow we will cover the five acres, the beautiful five acres that this house is set on. I would do that right now, but I don't think I'm gonna cover everything by the time the sun sets. So, uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Toodles. It is such a beautiful day, and I'm so excited to share the rest of the property with you. So, let's go outside. The property came with this fish pond and quite a few fish. I love to come out here in the morning and sit on that rock and eat my breakfast and just watch them play. They are so entertaining. Each of them have their own little personalities. Okay, now we're gonna take a stroll through the garden. I really love these gravel paths that go through the back half of the property and through the garden. And this path is gonna take us to the guest house. So this tree is probably my favorite tree on the entire property. It's an oak tree. I fell in love with this tree when I first viewed the property because I could totally envision like a tiny tree house, like not like a livable tree house, but just like a tree fort. Also, the tree is just really fun to climb. So this is the guest house. It is a, a work of art. It's a little rundown, it's a little funky, and therefore I am using it as a storage shed because it's rat infested, termite infested, and there's a composting toilet in there. There is running water and electricity. It's perfectly functional for some extra storage, so let's check it out. These are the remnants of an outdoor kitchen. Like I said, oh, there's a lizard in here. Hi, little guy. I almost drowned you. I freaking love lizards. I love how many lizards are on this property. There are just so many and they are just so cute. I can't believe you just let me pick you up. Obviously living in a rural area, you get to experience wildlife a little bit more often than you would in the suburbs or the city. But I just don't think I'll ever get over that. Every day I'm seeing lizards and snakes and deer and there's this fox that likes to come every now and then and chill on my porch. I just love it. It's just so great. I should probably let him go. Goodbye, buddy. Be free. Nice. Before I get into anything, first things first, tell me that is not a sexy looking bed. As you guys know, I'm sleeping on the mattress that has been in my van. 
bed. This will eventually be up there. It's a genuine antique bed. And I always said that whenever I get my own place that I really want a circle bed. And I found one. I want to reupholster the headboard and find a new circle mattress and I'm just so excited to have a proper bed. And it also came with these super cool light fixtures. I just like to keep the main house empty so that I have a clearer vision on what I want to do with it. We have a composting toilet and then a closet space goes all the way in there, some drawers cute little sink. I actually really like this sink faucet hardware. There is also a shower. It's functional, just kind of gross. And it smells kind of weird in here. So let's go back outside. Okay, wait, before we go back outside, I wanted to share these cool antique candles in candle holders that I found. How fun is that? Whenever I do decide to furnish my house, I will be prepared because I am hoarding a bunch of cool antique and vintage stuff back here. Just, just do wait. Just do wait. I mean, look at this bed. Look, look at this bed with these candles. Are you picking up what I'm putting down? Okay, let's finish the rest of this tour. The sun just feels so good right now. It's been cold for the past couple of days, so this has been really nice. This scrap wood in hoop house is left for me. We'll have to get creative with that. Ah! The garden is a little overgrown. Every time I walk back here, it looks so different. The plants are blossoming and blooming and doing their thing and I have no idea what's going on. I love it. I also thought this was dead, but I don't know what to say. I'm pretty stoked about this. I really thought that these trees were done though. This is my second favorite tree on the property. It's this massive eucalyptus tree and it's so pretty. It smells so good. Okay, now we're going out to the meadow. Look at all this space. I'm so excited to grow food and have animals. And as you can see, I do have some friends behind us. So let's go say hi to them. These are not my goats. I rent them from my neighbor, Adam, who you guys will definitely meet in the future. And they have been doing a really good job at keeping the grass down. I live in a really high risk area for wildfires. So it's just really important that we keep everything low to the ground. And they have been excellent lawn mowers. And they're also just fun to have on the property. And I think eventually I do want to get some goats of my own. And actually, four babies were born on my property, which I think is so cute. I think she's the pack leader. She's always making sure I'm not bothering anybody. And then this guy was... Actually, no. You weren't born here. They were born here. These two are a little bit grown up now, but they were born here also. I'm always asking Adam, like, when are the goats coming back? When are the goats coming back? I love having them here. They're so funny. And these two especially, they're, they're <laughs> why are you looking at me like that? Hey, hey. <laughs> All right, the show goes on. I know the space doesn't look like much, but I am currently in the process of pulling permits to get a workshop garage built here so that I can pull in two vans and have a hayloft on top as my office. I'm just so excited to have a designated space to work and tinker on my vans. I can see it now, just a wall with my tools perfectly organized, having a space to do what I love most. I don't know how long exactly the process is going to take. Things in this county, from what I hear, generally do take a bit longer to get approved. But regardless, it is something that I'm really looking forward to whenever it does end up getting built. So here we get a beautiful view of the canyon, but then also we get a beautiful view of the ocean. I am so incredibly happy and I'm so content and my heart is so full. This property is 
literally everything I could have wanted and more. We definitely have a lot of catching up to do, so we're gonna continue this conversation tomorrow. But for now, that is the end of the tour. I'm sure I missed a bunch of things, but that's also because I am still discovering a bunch of things on this property, and that's also really exciting. It feels so good to be back, and I'm so happy to be able to share this with you guys. Again, let's catch up tomorrow. I'm going to attempt to get down from here before it gets too dark. And there's something rustling in the bushes, so <laughs> see you tomorrow. Hi! I figured it wouldn't be very fair of me to just post a video after being gone for an entire year without some sort of explanation as to why I was absent. I have tried to film this part of the video a million times over, but it is extremely challenging to try to summarize everything that I've experienced in the last year without talking for hours and hours and hours on end. So I'm gonna try my best to give you a synopsis of what the chaos my life has been since we last spoke. And Alfredo is choking me. Hey buddy, you're holding on a little too tight here. It all started, <laughs> I'm just kidding. It all started with the death of my iconic blue van. More specifically, the second death of my iconic blue van. The engine blew out in September of 2020 and then it blew out again in November of 2020 while I was in Jackson, Wyoming. I had some film projects that I had to work on and unfortunately the blue van died three days into my trip. So I ended up staying in Jackson, Wyoming for the entire month of December, waiting for the mechanic there to try to revive the blue van once again. And unfortunately he was not able to, and I had to fly back home to California and ship the blue van back. While I was in Jackson for the entire month of December, I had an existential crisis and decided to reevaluate my life. And during that time, I just kind of came to the conclusion that maybe I should just give up on the blue van. I felt like if she was a person, she would be telling me that she's over it, she's done, no moss. When I first bought the blue van, when it was a green van, but when I first bought that van when I was 18 years old, I always said in the back of my mind that the second that this van dies, I will buy property and turn it into the sickest chicken coop the world has ever seen. However, I thought that would be decades from now, at least 10 years, not three years into me van lifing. So that was in the back of my mind. While I was in Jackson, I sort of conceptualized buying property. However, I was not ready to give up on van life. And <laughs> I know a lot of you guys are wondering, what about the Toyota RV project? And obviously my intention was to finish building that and transition from the blue van to the RV. But as I mentioned in my last RV video, there was a lot prohibiting me from finishing that project, which included where I was working on it. I was working on the RV project at my sister's house in her backyard and her neighbors were not very happy with me. So moving into the RV was not an option at that time because it did not have walls and I had nowhere that I could work on it. So when I got back to California, I impulsively bought the 1978 Dodge Sportsman Chinook, that green RV that you saw in my last video, and that was a great mistake but at the time I thought it was a great idea because it was already fully stock and I thought it was super cute but it broke down on the way home it literally broke down on my drive home after buying it so within less than 24 hours another van broke down on me the Dodge Sportsman Chinook was my final straw and at that point I was like okay maybe buying property is not a bad idea I think I picked the worst year in human history to purchase a home the market was just insane for a buyer. Alfredo and I spent a good chunk of last year without a stable place to live. And for a good chunk of time, I didn't even have a car. And that's not to say that I wasn't in a financial position to purchase a new car or rent an apartment. Before I actually started the house hunting process, I tried to find an apartment to rent as well as a workshop to continue working on my RV. And after crunching the numbers, the cost of rent for both of those things was more than the mortgage for my house. So after contemplating that, I was really stuck on buying property because it just felt like the answer to all of my problems. A place to park my vans, shelter, a place to work on my vans, and just fulfilling my lifelong dream of starting a tiny farm. And again, this conversation is just a very, very, extremely, super, extremely, very brief summary of everything that I've endured in the past year. But 
that's like a big chunk of it is that my vans kept breaking down. I didn't have a stable place to live with Alfredo. I was just going insane. And I know a lot of you guys are wondering, Janelle, why didn't you just tell us? Why didn't you just give us an update? Or just say that you're taking a break. Honestly, I didn't want to take a break from YouTube. I just really felt like I had nothing positive to say. And that's just very unlike me. I'm just very much like glass half full optimist. Da -da 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 -da. And I was like the complete opposite. I don't know where that shifted in my like mental. But every time I tried to vlog, I was hoping that I would have some type of good news, whether I got a new van or I don't know, not even that. Like I was hoping that I would have some type of epiphany where I was back to myself and I wasn't. As time went on, I was just becoming more and more unhappy and overwhelmed and frustrated and just lost. I just had no idea what direction to take in life. So truthfully, I was just like, I don't even know, I don't know what to film. I don't know what to say. And I, I definitely should have shared something and I take full accountability for that. But I just got so lost in life that even in addition to what I was going through, the idea of YouTube was also like lingering. I was like, okay, I gotta say something, but I don't know, but. And, and that just kind of added to the stress. I did not log into my socials for a majority of last year. And I, I just didn't even look. I was like, I need to figure out what I'm doing before I come back to this platform. And here we are. And I feel very confident and I feel so good and I'm just so content and ah, just, oh. Everything's just been so surreal and I'm very excited to share that. I wanna backtrack a little bit and just say that even though I was experiencing all these negative emotions, that simultaneously I was very aware of the fact of how privileged I am. And the fact that I was able to take a break from YouTube for a year and still be okay is because of you guys. And I really wanna emphasize that because your guys' love does not go unnoticed. Honestly, the past year has felt like just static and now I'm like back into my body. But I recently logged into all my socials last week and I have received an influx of just the most beautiful and sincere heartfelt messages from you guys over the past year and I am still reading through all of them. The fact that you guys like genuinely care, like you care about me, you care about Alfredo, you care about our well-being, like makes me regret not opening those messages during, a, during, <laughs> I'm gonna cry. <laughs> um, it makes me regret not opening those messages when I was really going through it because I didn't really have a strong support system. Yeah, I just, I love you guys. And I'm so excited and I'm so happy to be back. I'm so excited to just sit here and talk and feel heard and share. Like, I'm about to start a tiny farm. I've been wanting this since I was like five. <laughs> and I'm just, I just feel so like relaxed and like content and like a weight has been lifted off my shoulder. Like van life was amazing and I'm in a van life for the foreseeable future. This is not like the end, I'm not quitting, okay? I hope you're not too upset with me for leaving for this long, but I'm back and I'm better and I'm better than better because we got a house and we got land and we're gonna start this tiny farm. I am so honored to share this next chapter of our lives with you guys and I am so stoked to share all of the van life adventures and van builds and the infinite ideas I have for this house and there's just so much. There's so much and I could sit here for hours and just share, but I'm back and we have all the time in the world. So on that note, I think I'm gonna stop talking now. I love you so much. Stay rad, dweebs. Toodles.